Hi, so today is day seven of Sam's Advent Calendar. Um, it's not the one I planned to do, um, and you are going to have to excuse the slightly husky voice um, and the suitcases under my eyes, but I am feeling better after the uh, fluey bug that I've had over the last few days. Um, so yeah, definitely not the one I planned for tonight, but I felt after the day that I've had, I really wanted to do this. So where to begin? So it's so incredibly hard as a bereaved mum. I've achieved so much in my life academically. I'm a postgraduate scientist, I'm doing a PhD, I'm a lecturer, I'm a writer. You know, all things that a lot of people say to me, well, that's amazing, that's wonderful. And yeah, in its own right it is. But you know what? For me, my dream, my hopes, my wishes was to be a mum that I just wanted to be a mum and whatever else I achieved with my career and my academia was all peripheral and it was all about supporting my family. So I guess the hardest thing for me personally and certainly when I've spoken to other mums and dads um, when you lose the most precious little person in your life at whatever stage of pregnancy or whatever age that child is, you are ripped out of the world that you're living in, ripped away from the hopes and dreams. And you, you're always placed in this capsule of the worst version of hell that you can ever imagine. And that is just it's horrendous and it changes you as a person it changes you from somebody who's been living or existing to somebody who is literally trying to survive the worst pain that you can imagine the hardest thing for me i guess was stuck in that capsule from hell was the fact that the rest of the world moved on they carried on having Christmases and birthdays, celebrations. They carried on having babies and they carried on living. And I couldn't do that. And I guess one of the most painful things that, you know, people with the biggest hearts in the world, people with only my best interests would say to me, were, Philippa, come on, you know, it's time to move on. It's time to move forward. And for me, somebody saying that to me at that point and until very, very recently just meant that somebody was trying to persuade me to move away from my memories, move away from my children, my babies. And that was, it just made me angry and it, it kind of gained two responses from me. For people who were close to me, I would verbally lash out because how dare they? How dare they suggest that I move on? How dare they suggest I move away from my precious little people? For people that didn't know me that well and said it to me, I just put up a wall and I didn't want to speak to them and I didn't want anything to do with them. And it's hard and it was all down to my perception of what they meant by moving on. It's only... In the last, I suppose, 18 months that I've actually come out and stopped being reclusive, um, which is really hard. It's a scary thing to do after years of shutting yourself away in four walls, other than going to work every day and putting a mask on. Other than that, I just shut myself away because in the words of the Goo Goo Dolls, you know, you don't want the world to see you because you don't think that they're going to understand. And you know, that's how it felt for me was that, you know, I didn't feel people would understand. They kept saying things to me like, you've got to move on. And, you know, that, that was just the wrong thing for me to say. And so when I started kind of stepping back out into the human race, when I went back into theatre 18 months ago, I kept hold of that capsule. I kept hold of my memories with every last bit of strength I had. Um, because, OK, I was going to step out there, but I was not letting go of my babies or my memories or the things that were precious to me. And nobody was going to persuade me otherwise. It's only in recent weeks and months that I have 
I suppose got to know new people and people who have helped me almost redefine moving on. So moving on has now changed to actually moving forward with my memories. It's not moving on and walking away. It's moving on with my memories and what can I achieve? And this all started with a list that I wrote last Christmas as a result of a friend that I met through the theatre um, who suggested to me that I wrote a list of things that I wanted to achieve in my life. And at first that was hard because when I had that piece of paper, all I wrote on there was, I just want to be a mum. That's it. I just want to be a mum. And I was quite definite about that. But then I kept trying and I put my trust in him and I kept trying and eventually I came up with a list and astonishingly I've managed to achieve so much of that in the last 12 months. But as I say, in the last several weeks, couple of months, I've achieved so much more and in my head I've managed to re-educate myself to the fact that moving on isn't about moving away from my children, it's about trying to find a life that I can accept, a better life than shutting myself away in four walls. So what is it that's happened today? Well, obviously, as some of you will be aware, um, in recent weeks, um, I've had a huge amount of support from a certain footballer called Neville Southall. Uh, the wonderful Neville Southall, who has come out to, to really support me, my play, and what I'm trying to achieve, raising awareness with baby loss. And obviously, he is a footballer, and he played for Everton. Um, and as somebody who knows nothing about football, and that's not for any reason other than the fact that I didn't grow up with football supporters around me, I didn't know anything about football, I've never had any exposure to it, um, but kind of, I kind of felt that with the amount of support I've had through Neville and through Everton fans, amazing. And I mean, people from all walks of life have supported me with this, but Everton fans have come out in their droves and that's incredible. And I also have an amazing friend called Kelly Perkins, who, um, I also met through social media when I was, um, trying to get egg donation treatment a few years ago. But I only met her face to face for the first time this summer. Kelly is a diehard season ticket holder Everton fan. And on the several times that we've met up since we first met, I've listened in great awe to her passion about Everton and football. And it's just amazing. So anyway, having um, having kind of seen on social media the fact that it was an Everton game on. Sorry, had to do this in two parts because I started coughing. Um, so, yeah, having seen that there was an Everton Chelsea game on today, I decided that I would see what this is all about. I don't have BT Sport, so I couldn't watch it on the television. So I thought, do you know what? I'll listen to it. I'll listen to the commentary. So I got the commentary through Everton Football Club um, website and I listened to it. And it was amazing. And it had me on the edge of my seat. What an incredible game. And it, do you know, it wasn't just the football, it was the fans. And it, it was such a buzz, so amazing. And to hear people so passionate. And it was just, it got me. It absolutely got me. It made me quite emotional. You know, I never thought I'd get emotional at Everton scoring a goal. But I did, and it, it was infectious. So, do you know what? It, I came away from that game, and I thought, I've just done something new. Something I've never done before. Something that is moving forward and feeling comfortable with it. Something that I really want a piece of now and really hope that I can go and watch a game next year. Um, but I suppose, why is this for Sam? For several reasons. So 
day seven of Sam's advent calendar is one about the fact that showing her that her mum's okay and look her mum is finding a life that she can accept and that's okay and I'm not going to leave her behind and I'm not going to leave the babies behind and if she were here with me now I'd be buying her an Everton football kit for Christmas um but yeah, I mean, it's something that having experienced it today, I'd have taken my kids to see Everton play. I'd have taken my kids to football. And that's such a huge thing. And to find something new and feel comfortable with it. Today's advent calendar for Sam is about showing her that her mum's OK and she's going to be OK. And it's about football and giving her the joy of football too. So that's it. I've had an amazing day. And thank you, Everton. And thank you, football. And thank you to all the fans who've supported me. Um, and of course, goes without saying, thank you, Mr Neville Southall. Um, what an amazing day.